Welcome to my complete guide on the best ways to play Fable 2 on PC in 2023. There are two ways to do this, and I'll cover them both. The Xenia emulator and Xbox Cloud Gaming, aka xCloud. First I'll compare the pros and cons of Xenia and xCloud, followed by a guide on how to get Xenia set up in the best way possible with all recommended fixes. So let's start with the most exciting one, the Xenia emulator. This is the, as far as I'm aware, only Xbox 360 emulator. Let's start with Xenia's pros. Uncapped frame rates. Not even your Series X can do this. For some reason, Fable 2 never got a frame rate boost on console, giving Xenia a huge benefit from the start. Uncapped resolution. Xenia can output any resolution that's a multiple of 1280 by 720. This does mean that you can't output 1080p, but you can output 1440p and 4K. In theory, you can go even higher than this. This is much better than xCloud, which is only going to give you a compressed 1080p stream. No input delay, at least no additional input delay. This is quite a big deal because the game already suffers from its own input delay. No subscription is required and you will always have access to your game. This is in comparison to xCloud's £13 subscription, which we'll get onto later. No reliance on internet capabilities. No matter where you are, as long as you have a good PC, Xenia, and a dump of the game, you can play it. Graphical fidelity is unmatched. This is kind of a combination of the first two points, but it's worth stressing when it comes into a comparison with xCloud. Potential for modding. I know this sounds crazy, but it exists. I've done quite a lot of work on modding the game. Things like simple cheats to entirely new quests, jobs, and mechanics are possible. And one last small point, you can even open the guild cave chest and receive Hal's armor, the chicken suit, and a bunch of other things I bet you didn't know existed. Now the sad part, the cons. Firstly, you need a decent PC. I haven't done any benchmarks with different systems or anything, but as a minimum for a reasonably okay time, I predict you need something like a GTX 970. The Xenia documentation lists a 980 Ti as recommended, and it's probably right. The game crashes, sometimes a lot, sometimes not. Your mileage may vary. I can semi-consistently play over an hour without a crash. Over a 20 hour playthrough I crashed 9 times, which comes out to less than 1 crash every 2 hours. I did play in maybe 1-2 to two hour sessions, so I might have dodged the crashes that were creeping closer. The crashes, and the bugs that I'll get onto later, are both definitely the biggest downsides. Save corruption. This definitely happens sometimes, but generally I haven't really experienced it that much myself. This is easy to circumvent as you have the ability to simply back up your saves, which now that I think about it, the new consoles don't let you do. And save corruption is a thing on console. Remember back in the day when your favourite save file got corrupted and there was nothing you could do? Well, on Xenia to back up your save, you only have to copy and paste it. Ironically enough, you'll be safer on Xenia than on xCloud, that is, as long as you remember to back up your save. Bugs. There are three main bugs added by the emulator. They're all reasonably annoying. The most known bug is the black texture bug. This makes your characters and your dog's textures pitch black. There is a fix and a patch for this, but I'll get onto that good stuff at the end. The second bug is the exploding dog bug. This bug causes vertex explosions on the dog's mesh. It is the most annoying bug of the three in my opinion, but there is some good news. It seems someone in the Xenia Discord noticed that there's a way to get rid of this bug entirely. I'll talk about that later. The third bug is the flickering lighting. This has something to do with the Z buffer, and it causes shadows to be improperly calculated half the time, so shadows go on, shadows go off, at a very rapid rate. This bug only happens if you upscale. I have found a fix for this, which once again I'll get onto later. Uh, before I forget to mention, there is also a fourth minor bug. For some reason, sometimes audio will skip. You might be able to alleviate this by changing the max queued frames option within Xenia's config. And the last problem is that you need a copy of the game and an Xbox 360 to dump the game legally, though people often choose to ignore this part. Now let's take a look at xCloud or Xbox Cloud Gaming as it's officially called for some reason. So the pros. Very easy to use. No setup is required. You can literally play it from your browser. This is unlike Xenia which requires you to dump the game, configure the emulator, and then set up the patches. You don't need a good PC, and you can even play it on mobile, though honestly that kind of sounds like torture. No additional big bugs, there's a couple of extremely minor ones, which is just a problem with the console's emulation. 
no additional crashes. The fact there's no additional crashes or bugs is definitely xCloud's biggest strength in my opinion. Online multiplayer. However, since local co-op gameplay is identical to online co-op gameplay, this is mostly achievable on Xenia through the usage of something like Steam Remote Play. Xenia doesn't have the player orbs though, nor trading between players. And now the cons. Requires a £13 or $15 subscription. For some people this isn't that big of a deal as they may already have the subscription if they have an Xbox. For others it's the price of the full game each month. In fact, the game is half price while I'm writing this and reading it, so you could buy the game twice over for the price of one month. xCloud doesn't include the DLCs either, so you'll have to buy those separately even if you own the Game of the Year disc. The stream is capped at 1080p. It doesn't matter what resolution the game's running at if you're only being sent 1080p footage. The stream is compressed and sometimes has artifacts caused by a low bitrate. This can make it look like there's a layer of translucent skittles on your screen. I've heard of varied experiences with this. For some it's a huge problem, for others it barely exists. I've heard a decent internet connection above 100 megabits a second download is vital. Additional input delay. Since the game is running on an Xbox potentially many miles from your location, there will always be some input delay. This is just a fact of game streaming. If you've struggled in the past with the jobs or the shooting range, this is not going to make it easier for you. So to sum up the comparison, xCloud is more robust but of a lower quality experience. It is similar to, but not better than playing it on console due to the 1080p cap and input delay. If you do not have good internet, it may be unplayable. Xenia is less robust, but when it works, it's better than xCloud. It lets you mod the game, see the rest of my channel for more, and has generally smoother gameplay, until it crashes. If you have an old PC, or if you can't handle the hourly crashes, or if you're impatient, or you can't be bothered to set it up properly, just go with xCloud. And that's it for the comparison. Since xCloud doesn't require any setup, the remainder of the video will focus on getting Fable 2 running on Xenia in the best possible way as of 2023. All download links will be in the description. Firstly, you'll need the game's files. The only legal way to get the game's files is to dump it from an Xbox 360 by installing the game to a USB and moving the USB to your PC. I can't show how to do this because I don't have a capture card and there are better tutorials for this. I'll leave a link to one in the description. Now that you have the game, you'll need to download Xenia Canary. Canary is labelled the experimental version of Xenia, but it's really the best. The biggest feature it brings, that I can't believe isn't on the main version, is patching. Patches are extremely important for Fable 2 as they can eliminate some of the aforementioned bugs and let you customise your experience a little more. So let's download the patch zip. Extract this into the Xenia Canary folder alongside the executable. Before we move on to configuring the patches, let's configure Xenia first. There are two things we're going to configure. The first is Readback Resolve. Basically, it fixes the most prominent visual issue but halves your frame rate and doesn't let you upscale. It is an alternative to some of the patches, one that some people may prefer for a more true to console experience. I personally don't want to sacrifice resolution and frame rate for a bug that can be worked around, so I'll leave this as false to disable it. And the other options we're going to look at are draw resolution scale X and Y. These effectively multiply the output resolution. This is definitely worth increasing if your PC can handle it. Increasing these does cause the aforementioned flickering lighting bug, but this can be fixed with a patch, which we'll get onto soon. I have a 1440p monitor, so I'm going to set this to 2. If you have a 1080p monitor, you should still set this to 2 if you have a good GPU. If you're going for 4K, I suppose you should set this to 3. Anyway, you're pretty much done. Now we can configure the patches. This is the part where we fix the game to get it running as well as possible. This can get a little confusing, but it shouldn't be too bad. First thing you'll need to do is figure out which version of the game you have. I highly recommend getting the Game of the Year or Platinum Hits version of the game. They're both the same. This is because all of my patches are on that version. Only a couple are on some of the other versions. To find which version you have, launch Xenia and load the game. Look at the title bar for V something point something. If it says 10.1, you have Game of the Year or Platinum Hits. If you're on 1.0, you're on the normal version. There's some other versions, like Games on Demand, which I believe is 2.1, and the Russian and Chinese localizations. But as I said, none of those have my patches. Now we'll find the appropriate patch file. 
go into the patches folder and find 4D5307F1. Each of these four patch files are for a different version of the game. Since I have Game of the Year and have not installed the title update, shown as TU, I'll go with the first GOTY patch. Open the patch file with your text editor. To enable a patch, simply change false to true. Keep in mind, as I said, only the Game of the Year version has all of my patches. The ones I recommend enabling are the 1280x720 patch, the Disable MSAA patch, Disable Texture Morphing patch, and the Unlock Website Items and Unlock Collector's Edition Items patches if you want those. You can also enable the high tick rate patch if your PC is high end. It can cause instability if your PC isn't up to the task, and it does cause minor problems with ascending steps, but the result is a much less laggy UI, including the job meter, and a more responsive game in general. I do have one final patch that I haven't added to the patch file yet, so you'll have to add this one manually. It's the 600p patch which fixes flickering lighting. It does make the game slightly blurrier, but you probably won't notice while playing, and it's very much worth it to remove the strobe. To add this patch, just copy and paste the patch's code in the description to the patch file. So what do each of the patches I suggested do? Well, starting from the top to the bottom, we have the 60fps patch. This lets the game run at 60fps rather than the 30 that consoles are capped at. Alternatively, you can change the VSync interval option in the Xenia config. Next, the 1280x720 patch. This sets the resolution on the X-axis to 1280 and doesn't actually touch the Y-axis. This should provide a slight visual improvement. The Disable MSAA patch, well, disables MSAA. This does introduce aliasing artifacts, but the performance increase is insane. I previously measured a 30% frame rate improvement. Now we have my Disable Texture Morphing patch. This is, in my opinion, an absolute must if not using Readback Resolve. It fixes two of the main bugs, both the black textures and the exploding dog bug, if you change the dog breed, which was only discovered recently. For this reason, I highly recommend changing your dog breed as soon as you can. You can do this by going to Mergo the Trader under Bower Bridge and buying one of the dog potions for 10k. Unfortunately, by disabling the texture morphs, some of the morphs look strange, as it obviously disables the textures, but the alternative is Readback Resolve. The Collector's Edition patch allows you to get house items from the guild chest, and it unlocks the whole of the dead cave. The Unlock Website Items patch gives you the vast majority of the items that were only obtainable from the online Flash games. So, let's see if we've got it set up correctly. Launch the game and see if it says patches applied in the title. If it doesn't, you've either chosen the wrong patch file or not edited the patch file correctly. For most of the patches, you're not going to really see a difference until later on in the game, which is when most of the problems present themselves, but this clip here is a good indicator of what you've avoided. Before I forget, here is a quick disclaimer. The black texture bug is fixed by the Disable Texture Morphing patch. However, dyes and tattoos cannot easily be used with the patch as they also cause the black texture bug. But someone did say there's a workaround. Apparently, you can wrangle Readback Resolve to generate the textures properly. To do this, you enable Readback Resolve, apply the dye to generate the texture, quit, then disable Readback Resolve and enable my patch. Oh, and one last tip. Save often and back up your saves. As mentioned earlier, the emulator can corrupt saves if it crashes while saving. Backing up is extremely easy. Simply go to the Xenia directory, content, 4D53 whatever it was, 0001, and copy whichever save was modified latest. You can put it anywhere. I made a folder just outside this one and called it backups. Every time I'm finished playing, I simply copy the folder into there and rename it to wherever I am in the main quest line. Also, here's a quick tip. You can rename your save files folder from Hero00x to anything you want, and it'll reflect the change in-game. And that is all. If you're interested in modding the game, check out the rest of my channel and join my Discord server. I have a Patreon if you want to support me, and you'll also receive early access to some of my bigger mods if you do. If you have any questions or problems, let me know in the comments. Of course, I refuse to end without thanking my current patrons, WhatsUp Dog, Witchvitch 2.0, and Windtilda. Thank you all for your support.